Do you know this feeling? I do for sure. Sometimes it's like you're just a side note to somebody else's story. Like you're only there to fill a gap, to run into the scene for a short moment and then to disappear as soon as the hero arrives. It's like this for me all the time. Some time ago I went to a psychologist and told her about my life. She asked me what was worrying me and I answered nothing, because there's nothing to worry about. I'm befittingly successful at my job as a journalist. There's no rivalry at my newspaper. My parents are quite pleasant, my siblings keep friendly contact with me. I don't get into car accidents. Life is just passing by. My daughter grows into adulthood and I have to find opportunities to fight with her because there's so little conflict between the both of us. That became a problem. I am looking for ways to do something meaningful, to do something others would recognize. Deborah, my wife, she is somehow avoiding me. So fights are not possible. It's unnerving how good I am at being me. Others have to struggle to be themselves. I feel programmed to do everything right. And by this I become invisible, bland. My therapist You want to know what she answered to me? You're doing great, mister. You already know what the problem is. Just relax, try something new, and you will find something special, something meaningful. After that, I became a reasonably proficient BMX biker. Nothing changed. There... There was this one evening that brought something new. Near this old fairground I met somebody who introduced himself as Mr. Ask. He felt sympathetic for me and he told me there are others like me. People who feel like... like placeholders. Somehow He knew a lot about my condition and he had some important advice for me. There are people like me and then there are predatory subjects who hunt the like of me. He talked about identity theft and murder in some cases. It is of the most importance to report to a trustworthy person if I ever had the slightest hunch A predator was near. I would feel it if danger heads up. Of course it was easy to name somebody trustworthy. My father. He knows many people. He will protect me. So, what's left? My name is David Schmidt. And this isn't my story. This is Red Moon role playing and we are playing Changeling the Lost Homebrew Edition. And most importantly, I tapped the side of my nose a bit. He has eyes. That's good. That's... That's good. Okay, honey. Let's let's get over with this. Yes, I was looking outside the window and I looked a little confused and saw nothing and I look back and go, "Right. Yes. Okay, let's let's do this quickly." Yes. And so you three leave your former home. One look back 
and a mirror, seeing your human face with eyes and your fey face with or without eyes. So you start the streets down, walking across some of them, and it's clean everywhere. You do come across the living quarters with uh, the higher buildings, and between the houses there are small, very small garden areas with some trees, some ash trees, maybe. It doesn't take long until you arrive at your parents' house. There is a hatch in front of the building. It's not too high, but it separates the house from the street, as if it was a border between two worlds, and you're standing at its fringes. Deborah, not sure about the true risks, but realizing there are some really high stakes. Gulps turns around and says to you, Give me like five, ten minutes. I I thought of a believable uh, reason to, to, to be here. And I think I I will get the windows cleaned in yeah, around about ten minutes. No problem. I'll be able to... We can check in on you. And I sort of take that mirror out again. I've also took the liberty of changing my clothing. I, before we left the house, went upstairs, took some of my old clothes, put them on, so I now at least, clothing-wise, look more normal than the sort of weird clothing I was wearing from before. I also, if Hannah wanted, offered the same courtesy to you. Yes, yes, I, I, I accept. I think it would be a good idea. Uh, to slip into some more ordinary clothes. And I take out the mirror, once again recite my oaths, and spring to life the mirror, showing that dining room, and I go, all right, I'll wait and we'll see you. Ten minutes, you said? Ten minutes, and uh, then I'll knock on the door. And as... as Deborah goes, I go to Hannah, right, maybe you want to start doing your, uh, you know, look around the rest of the building, see if you can find another entrance. I, um, yeah, I start sneaking around a bit, uh, trying to, well, it's really not much, because, I mean, we grew up in this house, and I should be able to know all the entrances, shouldn't I? Yes. But it still feels odd, I think, being here again. After all this time. It does. You walk around the house. It does take you really long. But on the back side, there are the gardens. They are shared between the different parties living in each section of the building. But it is accepted that once in a while everybody throws their little party or the children are playing outside. Everything is hidden by a fence and a small covey. But it's easy for you to find the old little gaps in the fence, the better side of you does feel really natural in the surroundings. As you glimpse through this hedge, you can see the garden with the ash tree and the swing, which is dangling from 
the higher branches. The tree is coloring his leaves uh, in red and yellow, and the first of them had already fallen to the ground. Can I see David from where I'm standing? No. He's far away now. It... It is an ash tree. It is. How old does it look? Like the one in the park? Maybe. It could be, but at the same time, it seems to be extremely old. You can remember uh, being on that swing. It has to be like, I don't know, hundreds of years old. But it can't be. It didn't grow. It didn't change in any way. Can I walk up to it without anyone seeing me from the house? You have to be really stealthy on this behalf. I want to try to, well, first of all, my instincts tell me I want to touch the tree, but David found a poem. I want to, uh, it's, it sounds silly, but I want to see if this tree has something to say. How do you get close to the tree? There's a window to the living room, which is looking right into the garden. I walk close to the house to begin with, hugging the wall, and trying to see inside the window. And if the coast seems clear, I will dart quickly over the, the garden into, and under the shade of the tree. You hide away and stealthily move over to the tree. There's already a table and some chairs prepared for tonight. There's a fire bowl waiting to be enlightened. Maybe you really have to be careful. Somebody could get out and take some plates to the table. But now you have arrived at the tree. I, I place my hand against it and then I follow it around so that I'm standing on the f side that is farthest from the from the house and from the window trying to I don't know take in the sight but more more taking it in the smell of the tree is this your preferred way to discern reality from illusion touch and smell is I've learned are the senses that I can trust the most. It's easy to change the appearance of things, but the smell and the touch of it is harder to mask. So yes, this is how I prefer seeing things for what they are. If you want to look through any illusions and use your ability of canning, please roll your clarity dice. One success. You sniff at the tree. Sometimes, during your time in Arcadia, the Huns drove you across the place of the festivities, where all the nobles were holding the feast and chatting and were in good humors. You, of course, not. But there's nowhere around the giant ash tree which branches catch the skies. You do remember that there were actual stars and the finger-like twigs of this tree and they were pulled down to the ground and some of the prisoners there had to make them into jewels. This is a, a smell which you could only describe as star honey. There's no other word for it. And this tree does smell like star honey. You aren't quite sure if this isn't the tree from Acadia. 
I rest my forehead against the cool bark of the ash tree and uh, I wait to see what happens. I I never been that good at discerning time but I try to wait for 10 minutes. The smell does become stronger and stronger. It's finding its way into your nose and onto your tongue. It's lingering there, making you tired and dizzy. You have to shake yourself to to wake up again. And then you're sure ten minutes should have passed. Yes. Yes. I turn my attention back towards the house. Meanwhile, I've been waiting outside the front door, just looking into my little mirror, keeping an eye on the living room. Or the, sorry, keeping an eye on the dining room. You see and hear your wife talking to your mother. The older woman seems to be in some distress, but Deborah can calm her down. Shortly afterwards, she starts helping and very, very carefully cleaning windowsill after windowsill. You change mirrors from time to time to have a good look at the events. Indeed, I do. It's funny. I feel a little prickling sensation every time I do. But again, loopholes are funny. It's almost as if the other person is paying the price that I should be paying to keep switching mirrors. It happens. You change to the bathroom mirror. And there's somebody inside. Directly and very close to the glass. And you look into your father's eyes. I hesitate, and I hold the mirror on him. How does he look, my father? Older. So much older. You are so close to him. You can see that Time and worries had crawled their way into his face. He seems a little bit wizened, and you don't know much about medicine, do you? Hmm. No, I do not. You don't have any ideas what the meaning of this could be, but his eyes, there's some sort of grey whale over them. Physically, not in any magical sense. As in, they... They're greyish. Yes. Hmm. Is he losing his sight? It's so tempting for a moment to appear in the mirror, as I can do this, and go boo. But no, that's childish, and no. I just keep watching what he's doing. What is he doing in the bathroom? Just... He's shaving. I watch him for a little while more, and then I slip to another mirror. What was it like to... Be so close to him. On one hand, I wanted to... (laughs) To speak to him. To speak to him as a son does to their father. But unfortunately... I don't know what's going to happen soon. I don't know if we're going to speak. Or if things are going to get unpleasant. Hmm. I look back to the living room and I sort of gauge the time. Is it time to knock on the door yet? Yes. Yes, it is time. Through the window you can see Hannah move too. I put the mirror back in my pocket and I knock on the door, tightening up my shirt and my coat I'm wearing. It is your mother who's opening. David, what a timely arrival. Hi, Mum. Yes, sorry, I... uh... 
don't know if Deborah explained, but I just thought it'd be nice to come and see you before everyone else got here. That's very really nice of you. Please come in. I enter, and I look to my mother, and she seems welcoming. Maybe mother doesn't know about any of it. I don't remember that she'd have known anything about it. No. She might have not. It's good to see her then. I smile and go in for a kiss on the cheek. As you do, she... Yeah, it does seem as if she was cramping for a second. But but then she hugs. It's good to see you, Mother, really. Yeah. I, I expected you in the evening. That's all right. I came to help. Where's Dad? Oh, he's in the bathroom. He, he's getting ready. Well, I guess I'll have to wait for him to be ready then. And I go into the living room and I quickly look to where the iron dust was now gone. Um, the plan was for me to wait outside, but I still want to stay close if David needs assistance. So I will find a spot maybe near the hedge or maybe on the porch or somewhere where I can still be hidden if people arrive or leave, uh, but still be able to quickly come to help. Yes. Deborah was so witty that she opened one of the windows in the living room so you can hear everything that's spoken inside. I huddle beneath the window, uh, paying keen attention to what's happening inside. And so your mother is offering you some little baked goods. She disappears into the kitchen. I don't sit. I remain standing, looking at my even older home. Yes, I remember it well. Some good times here. What did you do with the frying pan? Deborah was given it. And I imagine she's used her intelligence to either have it on her or have it in the house somewhere nearby. Maybe she cooked, maybe we pretended to cook something and uh, brought something extra for everyone to have. Yes, yes, she must have it in the kitchen. You can hear her uh, rattling over there. So, anything else? No, I wait patiently, keeping my eye on where I know Father will be coming down the stairs. And so, the unavoidable happens. With heavy steps, your father comes down the stairs. And he's turning to the left and looking right at you, standing in the middle of the room. I let a few seconds pass as I took the liberty to step a few steps back so that he'd have to come into the room a little before he sees me. And I just look at him. What happens next? He comes closer to you. He's with you in the same room. You can smell the aftershave he used. You can see the slight cut he got during his operation. He musters you from head to toes. Nice to see you, son. Always good to see you, Dad. I'm sorry I've come early. It must be a surprise. Indeed. You just could have called, you know. I'm watching him very carefully. Does he seem to be acting strange? Is he looking at me strangely? Or does he seem confident and like mother almost? He frowned a little at first. But his expression is plain. One couldn't ignore the missing warmth in his voice. He sounds really cold. So, you're gonna come and have a sit down with your son? Something I'd like to talk to you about. 
before everyone else gets here. That's okay. Sure. Sure, it's always about talking about something, isn't it? What's wrong with talking, Dad? Nothing. Have a seat on your own. And he walks over to an armchair. I look to Deborah. I kind of look to that open window. I'm speaking a little loudly, not in a shouty way, but just to get loudly, just so I'm hoping Hannah can hear everything. Right. I'm going to have a seat then. And I go to sit in a chair near that armchair, and I look towards my father, and I say, So, how are you, Dad? I'm fine. It's the birthday of your mother. I'm sure you set her your congratulations. Oh, I did. I did. I'm okay, by the way. Not great. I've been better. So what's troubling you? Do you remember when we were children? And we used to go to... That... What was it called again, Dad? That little theme park we used to go to. The Spreepark. Yeah. It's right about the corner. Yeah, that's right. You do remember. Of course. Hmm. I was just talking to someone the other day. It's funny. I was there recently, you know. You know that tree that we all helped grow? It's grown really well. That's nice. I thought they shut down. I did, but uh, I have ways. I'm not really sure I approve of the tree anymore, though. I think... Uh, I think I heard some people say that they're going to do some building there soon. Knock all the stuff down. Including that tree. That'd be a shame, wouldn't it, if that tree got, you know, cut down. They're talking about reopening and reusing and all this stuff all the time. But they didn't manage it until now. You know, they... Uh, the, the Senate, they bought it way back in 2016, I believe, and they didn't manage to do anything with it until now. Yeah, so I guess it's a good thing then. Aren't you a little upset about that, though? We, we made that tree, and they're just going to tear it down. You know, I think if there weren't some people denying the reuse of this park all along. They, it would have been reopened a long time ago. But why are you so interested in this tree? Oh, I don't know, Dad. Why would I be interested in the tree? Did you plant others? He leans back and takes a deep breath. So... So it's you, Dad. Who else would it be, Dad? You know, David. You should meet him someday. Very nice guy. Didn't dip his nose in everything. Or should I say, doesn't dip his nose in affairs he's not supposed to dip it into. I seem to recall, Father, that you were the one who has wanted me to excel. The one who said, learn, never stop learning, David, is what you used to tell me. And I think I told you the values of family, of trusting your parents. I lean forward, looking at Deborah. Again, talking quite loudly so Hannah can hear. Oh? All right, Dad. Tell me why I should trust you. What do I not know? He squints at you. Maybe... Maybe this isn't the place for a conversation like this. Where would be? Outside. Under you and me. Sure. Let's go outside, just you and me. That's fine with me. 
and I stand and make my way to the door that I know would lead outside into the garden. I think I go over to the to the door, actually. I stand close to the door uh, so that when they open and walk out into the garden, they won't notice me at first, hopefully. I keep the I have the broken off rake uh, behind my back uh, in a uh, in a tight grip. Do you want to stay hidden for longer? No. I want them to come out and then they uh, uh, then I want them to notice me. But uh, I want them to come out first. This is no problem. Your father gets up from his armchair and walks slowly to the door. David, you notice his eyes, they shift to different things in the room. There was never a fireplace, but your father always had this poker this this poker over there you sought for sentimental reasons or to impress visitors it could be made of iron couldn't it it could as he's looking i just say come on dad hurry up let's go outside after this do you notice the hammer somebody might have forgotten to to fetch away Bring it back to the place where it belonged. There are a lot of iron-made things in this living room. Hmm. Again, as I step to the door, I open it, but I kind of do that thing where I'm looking at him as I open the door, and as I open it, I'm stepping out looking at him, going, Come on, Dad, how'd you come? So I can always see him. Slowly, he moves out of his own volition. He passes you. It's... Yeah. What does it feel like? As you're so close to him, you could touch him, but... I don't want to. It all feels as if... (sighs) The funny thing is, it's not like I want to harm him. Why would I want to do that? We just want him to tell the truth. And, if possible, break the pledge. That's what I want. I don't want to cause him harm. I don't even know why. Why? Why has he done this to his own children? Uh, uh, I just sort of think that as he goes past. As he walks past you, he stiffens, avoiding any contact. He walks by you, and when uh, goes over to the chairs prepared for the little party tonight. There he sits down, and as he's looking up to you, he notices Hannah. Oh. Of course. Hello, father. And I close the door leading into the house, and come outside, noticing Hannah, and going... Yes, Dad. Big happy family reunion. Now, something tells me you are going to talk straight with us. That's fine. We don't need all the answers. But what we do need is for you to help us break the pledge. It's over. (laughs) It's never over. You should have learned this by now. Once you got involved, there's no way out. There's always another way they will get to you. I'm sure there is, but if you help us on this count, at least one way will be dealt with. The easiest way. We know that you made a deal with one of them. We know that part of that deal was the the park and the park needs to be free from that deal that's what the important thing is here 
we don't want to hurt you. And while I'd love to know how you could do this to us, I'm not going to force you to tell us. I just want to know why. Why, father? Why did you give me to him? Every, every night the hunt begins and I have to run, run and survive. Why? You do have a fine family. You do indeed. Sit down. I'm fine standing, thank you. Answer her question, Dad. Enough walking around each other. Just answer the questions. Actually, yeah, maybe, maybe part of it is my fault. Maybe? Because I was much like you, David, when I was younger. Nosy and trying to learn about all the things that were hidden from my sight. One day, one day I learned the whole dark truth. It's a family tradition. What is? You mean... What you mean it's a family tradition that we offer our children to them? No. Secrets. Having secrets. Huh. The whole rotten family has it. Your brother, your uncle, your grandfather, your grand, 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 grandfather, and his father too. All of them. Oh, fascinating. And what's your secret, father? I wanted children. But... To give them away? Of course not. I wanted children. But... God didn't give us this gift. I was the younger brother of two. I don't know if you remember us ever speaking about Matthias, my older brother. He and father, they had lots in common. They went into the woods together and I was left home alone and of course I noticed there was something going on and asked questions about the late walks into the forest and these strange visitors we had from time to time but that was the business of my father of your grandfather and my brother Wait, when you say bruv uncle Matthias, what you named <laughs> you named one of your children Matthias as well. <laughs> yes. That's one of the conditions. Wait. I step forwards. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay. I don't care about the reasons, father, but what is the pledge exactly? We know the part about the free trees and the offer of protection for the forest, but what does it mean? To be gifted with children, I had to make an pact with Lord Esk of the Fairy. In the end, I swapped the brother who tried to betray me who thought of me as an offering for a son and for more children. There were other stipulations like I have to to make a home for these children and a home for the children of Lord Esk. I did. I I planted trees and gave Lord Esk rain over the parts as I did my work protecting 
the fairgrounds from outsiders, investors and vermin like this, who try to change anything. So I was given you and a voice that would be listened in the Senate of Berlin. And then your older brother did very well on his name and betrayed me by becoming a father too. Every life in this family had to be arranged with Lord Esk. There had to be a fair exchange. But by leaving his parents, your older brother doomed us all. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Why? Where in the deal does it say, why do all children need to be checked with Lord Esk? The deal was, you swap your treacherous brother and exchange, you get what you had. Why does it matter what happened next? Because of fairies. That's the reason why. There's always, always a fucking loophole. So, so wait, but I had... I have a child as well. Yes. You didn't tell me off for that, did you? It was very late that night. I I was in preparations because I knew of the arrival. But one could say it was ill luck that I wasn't fast enough. Fast, fast enough to do what? I... To meet the arrangements, to... To secure the well-being of everybody in the end I could I could pledge for your daughter she's fine I believe you can thank me for that later wait 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 why what did you do that made my daughter okay I get it Matthias he broke the rules but why did I not break the rules at least not initially we talked about this I don't remember. Yes. You don't remember. There. Yeah. I should have noticed at that instance that we were played for fools. They are tricky bastards, aren't they? They get to you. We had a plan, both of us. We we made arrangements. Everything was close to perfect. And then something happened. You forgot stuff. And you started investigating. You didn't... You didn't take care of your parts. Securing a name of somebody who... Who take the place of the new life we would owe to Lotus. I feel a bit sick in my stomach as I... Take in the meaning of what he says. That I did know about all this and I kind of stutter oh I see so in short I was supposed to offer a life for my daughter's life and I didn't but then yes but why why did it take 10 years to I I lived I had my daughter for at least 10 years before we were gone they are cruel aren't they Wait a minute, okay. Okay, that explains me. Yes, I looked at Hannah. But what about Hannah? Yeah, what about me? I have no one. I have nothing. And still, you gave me away for no reason. Matthias does have two children. So it was me for them. Was I... To give away the life of a newborn. To take everything away from them. Not even one day of their life. But but me? My life? Do you even know what I've gone through? Do you even know what it's like to wake up every day and know you will be hunted? 
not because something you did, but just because they could. No. No, I can't. Exactly. So hang on, let's summarize. What you're saying is, I'm responsible for myself being taken away, and Hannah, it was Matthias. Is that what you're saying in a long uh, summary? Yes. And what? You're just the one who did his best to have his kids and look after them. Is that it? I did this in the beginning for all of you. Right. Okay. You know what? Fine. Great. That makes us even easier, because now you definitely have to help us. We're breaking the whole thing, Dad. It's our blood. We're going to try burning down the trees. Wait. Where's the third one, then? We know where two are. I look at the one in the garden. I think the one in the spray park is mine. Is this this tree? Is it David's? Yes. And it doesn't matter if Matthias' tree still stands. Does it not? Careful, sister. As as his father says, there is wording here. If even all... my life for his. Children, it doesn't matter if his tree still stands. If not that, I mean it might eat all three trees for us all to be free, is what I mean. If even one tree stands, it might still count for all of us. And the park, which is the real important thing here. We've already lost, and they're gonna come for us, and we get that, that's how it works. But the important thing here, Dad, is that you. In fact, he probably didn't explain, but. Maybe you don't know. For some reason, he lets he lets his children escape, only then to keep catching them again as soon as they leave that park. Maybe that was the reason he made it in the first place, to have somewhere that if any did escape him, he'd know where they'd go. Maybe. Unless they play a part in all of this as well. He warned me about the swords of yours. What? The swords? People like you. Oh, did he? People like us. Dad, it's us, your children, your real children. Not the ones, I don't know what it, they are, walking around. We're the real children. The real children you said you did this all for. And okay, okay, I'll believe you that I messed up on my end. Fuck. With... with no eyes. Hmm. Walking around with no eyes. (laughs) But you know what, Dad? I didn't ask for what you did. Yeah? I Okay, I fucked myself over, but I only had to do that because of your deal in the first place. So, help us then. If you actually are blameless, at least to a point, help us. We need to break the pledge. Then, at least, it... Well, it won't be over, but at least it will be easier for... Not just us, but others as well. And fuck Matthias. There's one slight problem with this. What? I can't remember where the third tree is. Well, wait. Is what is what I said correct? Do all three need to be gone before? I would imagine so. Does Matthias know where his tree is? Maybe. Well... Shit. He's coming, but we don't want him to come with us. Is this. is this. the right, Matthias? Or is it. he is still here? Yes? The same way you are here. Wait, wait, wait. By that, what my sister means is, was he taken? It sounds like not, because he sacrificed her for his children, just like you did, so he... For one of his children, yes. You're not telling me that he sacrificed himself for a second child? That doesn't make sense. No, maybe... Maybe maybe somebody took drastic measures to stop this whole crazy shebang. What is that? For every child in your daughter's generation... Somebody else had to go. Wait a minute. 
Who did Matthias get married to? Or is with? Who's his partner? I think she is called Mary, yes. Uh, are you saying if she wanted another child, she could have swapped him? Would that even work? Someone from outside the bloodline? I mean, I don't know, Feo. Ugh. I think she is connected to us by her oath of of marriage. Well, that's just wonderful. Now I don't know if the Matthias coming is 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 the real one, or I mean, because we escaped, and, and and I can tell you now, Dad, we have not seen dear older brother for a very long time. He was not with us. You know, sometimes. In my dreams, I do have this feeling that I might know. You can dream. I can go there. I can find a tree. If you just sleep, I will I will go in your dreams and find it. Exactly that. Sit down. Have a nap. We'll find what we need. Trust me, father. I do this all the time. Is your wife in it? Hmm? Does your wife know about this? Partially. Not all the stuff you've done, but she always knew something was wrong for many years. Yes, she's here helping us. I would like her to watch me. Sure thing. Fine. Deborah! I call into the house for Deborah. Of course she's at the ready. Deborah, don't worry. It's not going well, but it's not going terrible either. Dad would like you just to make sure that we don't do anything unsafe to him while we uh, look for something we need in his mind. I know, it's a bit weird, but just trust me. Just just w- agree to sit out here and watch him. We're not going to harm him. He does actually want to help us in a strange way. She nods slowly watching closely on every of your actions. Your father is trying to relax in his chair. Then he closes his eyes. And I look to Hannah. I walk over to him. Stop when I... When I stand almost over him. And feel that aftershave and uh, the slight hint of pipe tobacco that he thinks mother doesn't know about. Um, I wait for his breathing to become slower and slower. And, and I start to synchronize my own breathing with his. I sit down on the bench next to where he's sitting and lean my head against my hands as I try to listen to the sound of him sleeping and enter his dreams. So you do. How to what extent can I change his dreams? You could change them a lot, but they would fight back if you do too much. He isn't the most cooperative person right now. No, of course not. And so his uh, defenses will work against you. Well, to be honest, my gut instinct uh, tells me I want him to relive the hunt I've lived for so many nights uh, while he's sleeping but I'm afraid it might wake him Uh, I might at least add a degree of paranoia and and a sense of something coming for him to begin with at least yes this seems fair I would also like to extend the power of the contract. So, if you want to, David, you could join in. 
I shall indeed enter the dream as well. I reach out uh, my hand just as I feel how the power kind of surges over me and I grab David's hand and kind of pull him with me into Father's dream. So please roll intelligence plus empathy plus vert against the Bastion's fortification. So I will roll two. With zero successes, bad things are coming your way. It's not like the usual walks you do into the dream world. Usually, you can choose a place to appear in, uh, to appear in. But this time, you are sitting tightly fastened in a cart of a roller coaster. Maybe to your surprise, you are a, in a place which reminds you a lot of about the Spreepark, but everything is just a little bit more twisted. The tiger roller coaster, it's, it's like a giant tiger snake which is burrowing through the park area. There are the swarm boats on the water, but The, the birds are alive and they do have gnarly, ghastly beaks with which they are fighting against each other. There are ghost lights everywhere in strange colors. And in the middle, in the center of the park, there is the ferris wheel but it's gigantic instead of ordinary lamps there are brightly lit pumpkins attached to every basket in the wheel you are caught on the tiger snake roller coaster i look to hannah confused and say hannah uh, how do we get off this thing um um, uh, it should stop eventually, I think, but we, I don't think we have time for that. Um, um. Oh, so where's father? We're supposed to be looking for him. Where it, ugh. I try to look around to see if he's anywhere. If we can see him in the train with us or if he's somewhere close by. No, he isn't. But your knowledge about dream logic tells you important things are always bigger in dreams. The ferris wheel. We need to get to the ferris wheel. Right. I begin observing the situation and looking like, how can we get out of this... How can we get off this uh, roller coaster and how can we get to the ferris wheel? Could I stop the roller coaster? Maybe. How do you do this? As we go through a pretty sharp um, curve, um, there's a tree standing in, in the middle and I kind of stretch out uh, almost impossibly long to grab a hold of one of the branches. Uh, I actually don't think I will be stopping the train, but I will wrap an another arm around my brother and hold tight to the branch of the big tree in the middle of the roller coasters and try to lift us off. This does sound like you're using strength. But we are in a dream, so your physical appearance is of no matter. Only your social attributes are important right now. Whenever you want to do something with force, you will use your presence. If you want to manipulate things, of course, you use manipulation. And if you want to withstand damage, you use your composure. I see what 
Hannah's doing with her hand, and I kind of just help give her grip uh, using my manipulation to influence her, if you will. After all, I'm quite good at thinking about what I want to happen. Okay, how do you support her? By taking both my hands and maybe a li little more skillfully extending them in this reality to support her grip so she can grab the branch. I would say you will need three successes on a presence plus athletics roll plus one dice from your dream speciality, dear Hannah. But at first, um, David will roll his supportive action, mm -hmm. which will be manipulation plus athletics. I rolled two successes. Hannah will get two additional dice. So three successes. How do you manage this? Just right. As my hands grasp the the branch, uh, the cart of the roller coaster is just about to do a swift movement up and almost down because of how the rails go. And I use that little extra force, the power of a push that we get from the little dip in the rails. And I actually start shrinking my arms again start pulling them in but instead of pulling the tree closer i i actually let me and david get in, get drawn closer to the tree shortly afterwards you're back to the ground making your way to the ferris wheel david you notice you can see the chain at your neck again Mm -hmm. I try and ignore it, as I say. Right, okay. Let's get off, let's get off this, now it's stopped. Let's start climbing out of it and make our way to that, to that Ferris wheel. I start running, almost hunched over a bit, uh, sniffing, of course, the air, without even me thinking of it. Uh, and... I, I pause for a second and actually, again, I stretch out a hand for David. I take the hand. Start running towards the Ferris wheel in a breathtaking speed. And of course, it does take years to arrive, although it should take only minutes. Distances, they are so fleeting, aren't they? The sky darkens and you pass some of the booth where food and drinks are served. A glance to the side shows you there's only one drink available. It does have the color of star. I stop in my tracks and I think David might even almost stumble into me I do um, that one I point towards the drink that one is the trees they have hmm, it's part of them I think maybe maybe it can help what? what you're supposed to drink it or something? I I don't remember. I think they make made jewels of them, but but it comes or it it's from or it's inside the trees. I think I, I don't know what it is, but I I call it star honey. Well, I don't know. What are we supposed to do with it? Come on, pick it up then, I guess, and let's make our way to that wheel. I I grab one of them. Uh pull it close to my nose and, and smell it. Of course, my nose now is more of a snout than a nose, of course. Yes. It's star honey. One sip might grant you wishes. It was some kind of currency at the court of Esk. He traded it away for favors 
and oaths. I actually hand the the drink over to um, to David. It's supposed to grant wishes, but uh, I'm not sure I would trust it, though. Wait, who grants the wishes? The the the, the, the drink, the star honey. Yeah, I know, but uh, this is the fay we're talking about. Who grants the wishes, Hannah? I can't remember. Well, in that case, I, I, I put it down. We don't need it then. We don't have time for another fay to be involved in this. <laughs> Onwards to the Ferris wheel. Yes. Candlelights flicker to the left and to the right as the sky is getting dark. It's good that the pumpkins are lit. The ferris wheel is right in front of you, turning round and around. You meet your father at the entrance. I run towards him going, Father! Father, good, we found you. Father, the time has come. The fir tree. You must take us there. So that's what you're looking like. <laughs> oh. I look down at myself, half substantial. And yes, this is what we really look like now, Father. I snarl and bare my teeth at him. Not by my own wish. Of course not. I think nobody here had wished for this. He turns around, looking to the wheel. Can we see the third tree from there? No. But you know, in dreams, sometimes things mean other things. Like when your friend is a duck, but you know it's your friend. Hmm. All right, then. Well, in your dream, what... Uh, I start looking around. What here might be the tree, then? Is the ferris wheel the tree? How do we know? It should be in there somewhere. Uh, maybe in one of the baskets. All right, but remember, dear father, the whole point of this is we need to... We need to then know where it is in real life, don't we? But if we find this, I think I will know I can find. Yes, you're pretty sure about this. Memories can be lost. They can become things. They can end up in the hedge and they can be hidden away in dreams. Fairies do like this, hiding things in dreams. If I would hide myself, I would hide in a dream. Yes. But that wouldn't make the memory of me less real. Do you understand, David? All right, sister, I trust you. Let's... I start looking at this ferris wheel. I mean, I might not be the best climber here, if I'm honest with you. Is the ferris wheel operational? Is it moving? It is moving. It's turning round and around and around. You take the next basket, I take the one after. I nod and do as she says. How do you climb into the ferris wheel basket? Well, initially, I'm nervous about the climbing aspect, but then I do remember this isn't real. And I kind of will myself, manipulate myself, if you will, to be a little more spider-like, as I kind of try clawing my way in to the basket. Yeah. You do this, and you end up on the inside. And how do you get on board? I... I just jump cling to the rails on the side of the basket and just pull myself in, landing in a big heap on the floor. As you sort yourself and have a look around, you can see in the far distance. You can see that what only very few dreamers can see. You see the borders of the hedge, the gates that lead to the streamscape. You see the tiger snake roller coaster burrowing away. You see your father. You can see him still clearly, though you are maybe miles away. As the wheel pulls you up, you rise and you rise and you rise high up. Both of you notice the passenger car you are in 
is empty. Right, I look over the edge of mine and my gaze begins following all the other cards I can see. Again, I am good at looking at things, so I have advantages when it comes to perception. And you notice the difference in this very special car over there. It has a special glow and sometimes the wind carries some of the smell of star honey to you. It's what like four or five carts away from you and and Hannah isn't far away either. Hannah, I think I see it down in that carriage down there just below us. Yes, I will I will get there. I start um, climbing up the side of my cart. I'm I'm gonna see if I can get maybe I can time a jump or uh, to get to the next cart or maybe I can climb up to the roof and then on to the to the beams or something. That's a good idea. Do you want to jump or do you want to climb on the beams? I think I will jump. There's a wind because of course there's a wind. One could even say it's a little bit storm. Roll your presence plus your athletics plus one for your dream. Three successes. You jump. For a second it does seem as if you were blown away, but you can get a grip and pull yourself close to the next basket. David, what do you do? Well, she's doing this i think to myself wait a bit it looked there's no way that there's no way it's the same thing right i kind of wait until the ferris wheel goes round and i'm trying to wait for it to then go back near to the bottom again so i can jump off because i need to get back to the cup we left behind maybe it was important after all just as hannah is making her second jump Coming even closer to the to the card with a memory, you jump to get off the wheel, and as you do, you feel a strong pull at your neck. I swear, and I just try and pull against it, trying to now I've got off the wheel, get back to that previous cup. Your halt a few steps, but get back to the ground. Uh, you shouldn't have done this. I look behind for a moment. It's Lord Esk, isn't it? It is. Oh, I'm sorry. Why shouldn't I have done this, Lord Esk? Doesn't please you, I imagine. Yes. Why should it? Ah. Oh, well, I'm so sorry. I wasn't doing it to make you happy. And again, as we're speaking, I just try and dart towards that cup again. <sighs> He pulls again on the chain just to keep you out of reach. You know your behavior will have repercussions. I don't doubt it will. Although... <laughs> oh wait, I get it, of course. The garden. Our garden counts as your domain, doesn't it? Of course. I, fr I frown as I see I can't get to the cup and I just my eyes dart to the ferris wheel. And I go, okay, fine, I'll have to buy a time. And I look back to Lord Esk. All right, my lord, tell me then. This is going to be such a horrible punishment anyway. What's the point? What's the point of having the garden where we can run when you're only going to catch us again anyway? I don't like to get my servants away. But why not just have better security in the first place? Why go to all the trouble with this pledge? Pledges are tricksome, tricky. This one's been broken several times, or at least got around. And it provided me with some beautiful, beautiful little creatures, didn't it? It did. Yes, it did. So, now, please come to the conclusion that everything you do is pointless. I don't say anything as I, again, my eyes just dart to the ferris wheel. What's Hannah doing? You're clinging at the outside of... A passenger cart on a ferris wheel only two carts away from your goal I'm thinking 
How far from the bottom am I? That's quite a bit. I could wait until the cart goes back down, get off, and then just try to take the next one. But somehow I f it feels like this memory won't really pass the bottom of the ferris wheel. I... I steal myself and I jump again. You do. And you have the feeling, the distance of this jump. It's greater than before. The space between you and your goal is growing. This dream is working against you. I know we never established this at the start, did we? But I have two different other forms, don't I? You do. Um, I was gonna ask for a bird. Choose whatever form you like to. Then I am a big ugly bird of some sort. It kind of reminds of an oversized magpie, but the, but the feathers are dull and, and ruffled. Uh, it's got a bent beak instead of a straight one, and the eyes are actually a little bit too small. Uh, but that is the form I try to take so that I could fly down to the memory instead. Do you wish to invoke Chrysalis? Yes, and it costs two glamour. I open my mouth, and the snarl I've, I have been working on, like this entire endeavor warps, transforms into a horse car as uh, my body distorts and, and changes. Um, still the black and white in my hair and on my body can be seen in this warped form of a magpie. And with a loud shriek you throw yourself into the air. Lord Esk noticed this and turns to David once more. <sighs> You're really going for this. Your last chance. Surrender and I will reinstate you with some of your functions still working. Oh. See this bird over there failing and she will. And then you will be surrendered by me. He's coming closer, always holding the chain tight. I feel deep, unpleasant feeling in my gut. And I wonder what will happen. But I feel if this is ever a time for it to happen, it needs to happen. And here in a dream, at least, no one else will know. Something tells me the others would look down on this. As I call out aloud, then. All right, Lord Esk. I'm sorry it has to come to this. Twilight Avent. Twilight Avent. Once I gave you a favor, a secret given freely. You said... A boon could be repaid, and I call on that boon to be repaid now, Twilight Avent. And I call my fairy favor to the one who owes it to me. Thunder crashes. The dreamscape shakes. And then there is a change of light. The candle flames become pale. The wind stops as if the heavens had to hold their breath. Lord Ask stands in wonderment. Then a beautiful lady arrives from the horizon. Yes. Twilight Avent. Was it the first time I gave her a secret? I'd actually given her quite a few, I seem to recall. She comes closer. Something about her changed. You see some dark strains in her hair. She's wearing a new crown and a black veil covers her face. 
little spy, you called for me in such endearing company. My greetings, Lord S. Greetings to you, my lady. My teeth are on edge. It's strange. Before I realize when we were in his domain, the presences of the others were always dulled. I feel so that I could maintain my function, but now I've broken free and remember the real world to then feel the presence of not one but two of these things. It just literally feels like something's drilling into my teeth. And I say, Twilight, break the chain, please. That is the favour I ask in exchange for the favours I have given you many times. You wish you could see her face. She speaks in a way that conveys a, a smile, a wicked smile. Oh, this would cost me dearly, let us spy. In that case, I would not ask something that would cost you dearly. I, 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 I. Perhaps simply convince Lord Esk to give us a little more time for a game. That wouldn't be as dear, would it? A game? This sounds fun, yes. Yes, you're right. But actually, I would like to take you on your first offer. I look confused and say, didn't you just say that would cost you much? Yes, but... Luckily, somebody gave me an opportunity to meet somebody. It was quite the nice occasion, wasn't it, Lord S? Me, you, sorrow, me and you. And now I am sorrow. I look extremely confused and say, what do you mean? Well, I took her crown. You took the Lady of Sorrow's crown? What else should I have done? I, 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 I actually don't know what to say because my memories are vague now but I do recall wasn't she supposed to be what of the I mean I have no idea how their world really works not really Lord S doesn't explain but I do recall that that was someone he respected <laughs> I like games I like playing so my lord let us buy let me do both of you a favor and with a short touch of a finger, the chain breaks away. Uh, and I fall to the ground and almost breathe in heavily. As also looking up at this point, because I'm really hoping while this has all been going on, Hannah, please, for the love of God, have got to that memory. Hannah, how are you faring over there? Well, as always, when I enter this form, it's a bit confusing, because it feels so good to feel the wind lifting your body like it does but I I manage to focus and I'm slowly circling down to get towards the memory in the basket you are a bird and you are in the dream you are truly in your elements whilst the commotion downstairs is going wild you can you can feel the rivaling Fey auras fighting over property, over favors, power. You reach the basket. There it is. The memory. Of course, it couldn't have been anything else. It's a knife. A knife. The knife that cut the wound, that, that fed the tree. Yes. I land next to it and, and reach out a clawed foot to grab the memory. And you take it. You feel it. It's, it's not much that it needs to be opened to reveal the secret. But in this moment, a scream of frustration swells over the dreamscape. Lord Esk crying out for the betrayal but shortly afterwards a silence by the lady of sorrows and advent twilight she puts one of her hands on his arm and says of course my action has to be balanced 
that are the laws, and I'm not going to break any laws. I will swap one servant of yours for another, and it's like a magic trick, like the rabbit out of the hat. She pulls somebody from under her coat. It's a girl with ragged hair and amber eyes, frightened, looking up to the mistress without a face. And she turns her over to Lord Esk. His voice can be heard everywhere. Uh, didn't I say you would fail? I did, and I won't stand corrected. Bird, you have one choice to make. The girl or the memory. One of them is going to be mine. As this is happening, I just dart towards that cup and hopefully reach it to take it. Yes, yes you can. And, and I look up and I realize we really need to know what this thing is because it will quite likely affect what's going to happen next. So I will quickly cast my walls, have ears, spell, costing a glamour to whisper to this, what was she called it? Star honey. I whisper. The Queen of Sorrow's crown has been taken by the Avant Adamant Twilight. What are you? I am the promise. The promise of a child unborn. I begin trying to work out in my mind, as I am a kind of intelligent person with a bit of knowledge of the cult. <laughs> Basically, I'm trying to put together, wait, okay, we have this item and she's trying to get the knife. Is there a third item we need? That makes sense, right? That's what I'm thinking. Two is not enough. Or is it? You do know two locations. Actually, you would only need the knife. Why, why do I think that? This dream, it's made from the memories of your father. Of course, the catalyst for his motivation would be here too. The thing he traded for. Right, I keep a hold of this cup and I... I'm tempted to either pour it onto the ground or drink it. But I'm not entirely sure which one helps us. I think I'm going to pour it on the ground. As I watch the dilemma my sister now has. I land um, on the ground uh, a bit from all of them, of course, uh, taking the form of Hannah. I, I, I say, D -d don't take her. Uh, take me, me. I, I can be. Yes, I stay. Leave her. Let her be. I, I stay here instead, and she can take my place. No, 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 not my place. She will go, and I stay. Don't take her, Hannah. What are you doing? You can't agree to that. I made a promise. I would get her out. And so I will. I, I hold the knife, right, still? Yes, you do. And I kind of... I hold it. I don't str stretch it out to the others. I kind of hold it a bit behind myself, behind my back almost, as I walk slowly towards the others. I made her a promise, David. I, I... I can't... You know what a promise means here? Yes? I, 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 I do. But then I look to the new Lady of Sorrows. Wait, I, I... I... I ask for clarity. You are simply swapping us around. How is this benefiting you? I mean, I know you're repaying my favour, but how is this repaying the favour? I ask for aid. I set you free, didn't I? But I also have to obey to the laws. Every action must be balanced. I did harm to the property of Lord Esk. 
that had to be repaid fast before there would be consequences for me and both of us wouldn't want to see any consequences come from this little trade we did here so everything is fine isn't it I laugh a little and say free for now but he can just hunt me again can't he I know the chain's gone but it's not really gone is it oh my dear it is gone Gone for sure. Lord Esk? Yes, yes, you're free to go. Ah, uh, maybe you want to stand in for your sister. No, 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 no. I have nothing, David. <sighs> That's not true. You, you, you have me. Yes, but you have Hilda and Deborah, and I have. I have. I have this, and I have her, and that is all I have, and I can't let him have her. I sort of sigh as I look down and notice I poured all that star honey into the ground. I'm guessing it hasn't really done anything, has it? It hasn't. Hmm. I toss the cup aside. Where is... I sort of look and see, like, what did Hannah come down with the dagger? Yes. And she's in her more henna form, not too far away from the fairy's knife at her back. I look to the two fae. Again, not too hard, because despite all my confident bravado, it is painful to even look at them for too long. Would I be able to have the honour of a parting courtesy to a family member soon to depart? Of course. But I would advise you against... Swapping the ownership of certain objects. Why would that matter? You were going to get my sister. What does it matter what she has on her? Because otherwise I would have to uh, start bargaining again about your life or the life of somebody who was important to you. You see, it would get really complicated. I, I, I nod at this, sensing that time is of the essence, and I go towards you, Hannah, and I go to embrace you, and I whisper, I don't think I can take the knife from you, but maybe if I just touch it. I nod, and I embrace you as well. Can we tap into the knife in some way? Uh, I mean, I can. Uh, of course you can. And yes, and as I embrace you, I reach my hand and do not take the knife, but merely brush my hand against it as once again I spend a clamor to whisper. Our oldest brother betrayed us all. What is your secret? Um. There is a flash of a memory. You see a tree amidst a forest. You can't see any streets, but you can see the banks of a river. It's dipping its feet into the water and drinking from it, growing into the river. Might even one day claim it for its own. Do I... do I know where that is? Yes, you know where this is. And I don't break the hold, as I say. Figure away, Hannah. We'll get you back. I promise. David, I'm just happy I... I got to see you again. (sighs) Tell... Hilda, auntie, loved her much. I'm sure she loves you too. Just like her father does. Okay. And I let go and step away and give a courteous bow, which would indicate, of course, I know that our parting is over. You join, Lord Esk, 
and the dream starts to fade away. David, into your hand, the hand of a small girl with amber eyes is given, and you awake. I wake up from the chair I was sitting in and sort of sit upright with a start, and I look around, panicked. In front of you, there is your father, still deep asleep, and the limp body of Hannah, not moving, not breathing. I run over to Hannah, and I'm not entirely sure what to do. I... Is her mind only taken? Why hasn't he taken the body yet? What does that mean? That's a good question. There are no answers. No, they're not going to be. I stand up. I look to Deborah. Deborah, are you okay? Yes. Yes, something happened. But, but I can't recall what the... <sighs> I called in a favour. I'm not entirely sure it was the right thing to do. We need to... We need to take Hannah's... Hannah's body will be safe in a place I know. As will... And I turn around. Have we been joined by another individual? There's somebody crawling out of the bushes. Small, dirty girl. She's... She's looking up to you. Hello. Hello. My name's David. What's your name? David. I... I forgot it, but I... I know I had something for you. Yes, you gave my sister a ticket, remember? Yes. Yes, I did. Right. You need to listen carefully. My sister took your place, and you're going to be better now, but it's not over. And I go over to my father and sort of shake him awake. Before you do this, how does it feel to partake in a trade in which your own sister was traded away and calling in favors with fairies? Please roll four dice. Three successes. So you take three points of clarity damage. You walk over to your father. Something changed about him. He's wearing a crown and a mantle like a king. His shoes. You know these shoes. These are the shoes of, of your lord who kicked you so very often. The person in front of you, just as you want to shake him, awaits and speaks in the voice of Lord Ellis. David, I think we have to attend important matters. I tilt my head and hold it. This can't be what I'm seeing. No. How are you here? You can't be here. But that's my home. That's your home. That's where we stayed and will stay forever, David. Wait. Okay, no, no. I, I, I go over to Hannah's body and see the rake. And I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to grab it because I need to focus. This can't be what I'm seeing. And I grab that iron. Oh, it hisses like a snake. You feel the cold radiating from the rake. It's engulfed in dark blue flames. It's speaking to you. Let me be the bane. Let me clear your vision. Let me be the rain. Yes, yes. And I, 
I pick it up and I, first of all, I will put my other hand against the iron itself. I need that pain. You feel it. It's in your hands. It's hurting you and giving you power at the same time. What is the last thing we see of David? Well, if I could make this two things. The first thing is, I look back at my father. Is he really Lord Esk? It seems so. It, it would make sense, wouldn't it? He was a tyrant. Okay. I say, I'm sorry, Lord Esk. On this side of the field... We had things to attend to, and you are not invited to that party. And I go forth, and I do not strike my father with the iron. I just push it against him. As I say, this is the realm of iron, and you are not welcome. You push your father over. He falls to the ground. There's sound. Something breaking? It might be. But it's not your father, it's your wife's eyes, seeing through the mask, seeing the darkling you have become. No, I, I hold the iron against him. I want to see it work. It has to work. It has to get rid of him so we can burn the trees. Maybe it does work. Maybe it doesn't. You're standing a rake in your hand in a garden, maybe at 10 p.m. in the morning, shouting about Feylords. And one person falls to the ground. One person is looking after a limp body. One person is turning away. And the rest of the world doesn't care. We turn our gaze on the other side, to the dreaming lands. Hannah, you're taken once more back through the hedge, back to the big ash tree, to the feasting place, to your hovel. What is the memory that will be stripped away in only seconds from the thorns? I uh, grasp to k try to keep the memory in just to make it stay, but the sight and the sound of my brother, my brother's voice, slowly gets entangled in the thorns, and the only sliver of a memory I still bear with me of him is his descent. Something pushes against your hurt leg. It's the wolf, the green leaf wolf, and it's looking up to you with his somewhat familiar eyes. And then you hear him growling, a lot of liars. In our family. Let the hunt begin. I snarl and start running. And as you run, feel there's something with you. A tiny yellow jewel. The last time you thought of it, was in your hovel, the light, the light of summer, which you had all this time with you, it will guide you in this darkness. There's one tiny thing we have to attend to right now. In a garden full of madmen, there's a tiny girl who doesn't understand the world anymore. She feels lost. She is missing her daddy and his 
kind lady friend. And there's her friend, the badger. And the claw-like hands of the badger are holding something very tightly. The little girl burrows her way into the fingers and pulls out a small yellow gemstone flickering with the light of the summer sun. In the following weeks, the hunts in the Spree Park, they become more and more sparse. The inhabitants, they can move more freely. But sometimes, when the morale is low and not much hope left, they gather around an old broken popcorn machine and they tell the tale of Day and Hannah and a promise that was made to get them back. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the adventure Red Moon Above the Spreepark for Changeling the Lost 2nd Edition. Our Game Master was Tobias, who you can find as Tommer2 on Twitter. Players were Craig and Yanni Briambari. Changeling the Lost 2nd Edition is published by Onyx Path Publishing. The music is made by the talented Simon Kölle, who you can find at simonkolle.com. Sound effects are from soundbible.com, and salamisound.de. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshobear, Nastasha Rollerson, and David for their generous support. And we would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. Thank you again for listening, and see you soon, again.